Welcome everyone to a new amazing video in which I will explain everything you need to know about MVI and how to use it and apply it in your app. So MVI is a design pattern that we use to structure our presentation layer, only the presentation layer. Because in a typical clean architecture app, we have presentation layer, domain layer, and data layer. MVI is used in presentation layer only. Now what we have in here is the structure of a clean architecture app with domain, data, and presentation layers. Now we are interested in presentation only as I said. So this is a presentation layer that uses MVI as its own design pattern to structure it. If you actually want to apply this in a large scale app with other scales like in architecture and dependency injection and even building a kit or backend, check my premium course in the description that will make you exactly do that by building an industry level Android app from the ground up using all these skills. If you're interested, you can check the description as I said. And now, so what does MVI stands for first? We have the M that stands for the model. That is the view model and the state of our UI. So let's say we have a screen in which we show some data. What is the state in here? It is that list of data. So all of this data can change, can be updated. We can delete some items from it. So it's a state that can change. And then the view model is what is responsible of updating and changing that data. So it's like the brain of our UI that manages all the states, all the logic, and also receives all the actions from the user, like when we click on a button or so, and then processes those to update the state. So that's the model, the view model and state. And then we have V, which stands for view or the screen that users can see. This could be a composed screen. This could be an activity, a fragment. So in Jetpower Compose, it's just a composed screen. So that's the view where we can see all the data that we have in the state. So the state holds the data, like the list of items in the in the view, we show those items in a beautiful way in our screen. And then we have the I that stands for intent or actions. So probably I will also change this. So I stands for intent or actions. So these are the intentions of the user or the actions a user can do, like clicking on a button, changing some color, adding new text, deleting an item, doing whatever we can do in the screen. These are all intents or actions a user can do. So that's MVI. And MVI has a strict one-way data flow. So when a user clicks on a button or does any other action that we can do in this screen, we can call only one function in the view model that is called on action. And that on action will receive that action or that intent from the user and then processes this to update the state or do whatever we need to do. And then in this M or model, which is the view model and state, we actually hold all those states in one object. In Kotlin, it's one data class that has all those states and this is for easy management of these states. Unlike MVVM in which we'd have a state flow for every state, like for the list of item states, for is loading state, is error state, or any other state, we would have a state flow for that in MVVM, but in MVI, all those states are managed in one object, and then we have one state flow for them. And this is what's called the single source of truth, because all the states, all the things that we can show in the screen are all in one place, and we can access them directly from that place. Now what we are going to do is let's go to Underwood Studio and try creating that with actual code. So in a click architecture app, we would have for every feature its own package. So let's say usually we have the core package that would hold actually right here in the road package. We'd have the core package that would hold all the shared stuff between all the features, like the main activity and the UI and all that stuff. But then what we would have also is another package for a single feature. So let's say this is login future in which we can log in to create an account. And then in here, we would have a package for presentation. Also, if you want to understand clean architecture in details, I will leave a video in the description that will explain all the other layers, domain and data as well. In this case, we are interested only in presentation. So we have the presentation as well, we would have domain. And then here we would also have data but we are not interested in these two. Now in presentation, we want now to apply the MVI design pattern. So what we'd have first is our state data class and we should have all the states related to our login. So here we could call it login state. So what are the states in here? First of all, a var email. So the email a user can enter of type string and by default, we can give it an empty string because at first we don't have any email. We can duplicate this for the next one that is password and then if we've also need to enter something like a verification code we can also do that or if we need to check some toggle or anything so let's say now the other one is 
is logging in so are we logging in currently or not like this of type boolean at first false because we are not logging in and then another state for let's say is valid password and then is valid email so is the email well formatted and also is the password well formatted for example we have at least eight letters at least a number at least a capital letter or whatever also in the email it does not contain any invalid letters or whatever so all those are the states related to logging in and then we want to go to the next thing which is intent or the actions the user can do let's create a new file for that which is going to be an interface called login action and here we'll have all the actions of that user in one place and this is going to be a silver interface since we don't want any other object to implement this but the ones we'll create inside here so what are the actions we can have a data class let's say change email that will take a var email of type string and that implements login action so that's an action which is a user can change their email type in new letters deleting letters and so on with their keyboard and then the next thing change password this doesn't mean that they change the account password but only the password text that is written in the login screen and then the next thing is let's say login so they click on the login button this could also be login button click or whatever you want to call it so here we don't have to pass anything and since we don't have to pass anything we can make this a data object just like this so these are the actions a user can do and now we can move on and still in the model so now we just finished the intent or actions now we can go for the model which is as i said the state and the view model in here let's create the login view model that is going to be a class this class needs to extend view model and then here we want to create a state for our login state that would look just like this so here we get a mutable state that we can change here in our ui and it's a mutable state flow which is our login state just like this and then we create a public version that is going to be a state flow only an immutable one that we can expose to our screen so that we can read states from it and so on so this is how it would be and also it would be in this way so a var state actually now let's say state 2 because we already have one but state is going to be mutable state of my login state like this and then private set so it's the same thing this is the state that we can change so it's a var and we can change it update it in our view model but also we expose it to the screen so that we can reset from it but those changes that we can make to it are only private so we can privately change it in our view model but don't publicly change it in any other place like the screen so both of these can work so let's skip both of them and see how to update both of them the next thing we have is as i said we need to create the only public function in our view model that our screen can access which is fun on action it takes an action of type login action and then when this action is like this at the remaining branches so we get all those actions from the user and then we can process them and update our state based on these actions when the user changes their email what is the action now that they updated the email so they added the new letters in the email so what we need to do here is we want to use our state dot update it dot copy the email is going to be my action dot email or new email rather say so new new email or updated email here new password actually i forgot to change this so the email that we have in our state we get an object of our state that is this it from the update function create a new instance from it that has the new email and then we update that simply so that the state is updated and then every update that we make to this one is of course reflected in this one that we'll be observing from our screen and if we want to use this one only then we can just write state2 is going to be state2.copy actually here i need to write by and then import again import so this one is going to be dot copy email is going to be action dot new email so as you can see it's almost the same code and they both will work and then we can just copy this for the next one that is on password change and here we get the new password with this action new password and then when they log in we want to call some function here private fun login that calls some function in our repository here so if we inject any repository to our view model then we can just call that so here we could say for example view model scope we launch a routine scope in here and then we say state so again we just update that those two states here is logging in is going to be true because we started logging in and they're here as well but this one is logging in 
we want to update this one more time in the bottom here for now false because we are no longer logging in and then in between here we can simulate a login like for example delay of two seconds and here we just say now something like login so here we are logging in and then we can come here and call that login can also add a new state in here that is so not in the action but in the state that is now is logged in so when we successfully log in and we can update right here and say is logged in is going to be true because now we did log in and we can update that for the other one as well also if we have an error we can also say that for example is error or error type or error number whatever we want in here and here if we have an error then we can just say is error true and then technically we're no longer logged in so it depends on did we log in or not based on some results we get from our login use case or repository that's the process and that's how our view model would look like now we want to go and create the screen or the view which is this one here we want to create a new file called login screen there's going to be a file and what i love to do since i usually use queen for dependency injection i actually have this live template that i can show you right now called comp screen which is what i use to actually create my screen in an easy way and since now i don't have queen dependency injection in this app but you still want to use this template you can just go to android studio settings and then go to editor live templates go to under with compose comp screen and then paste the code that you will get in the description there so you add a new one first paste the code and then you click on apply to have that live template but since i don't use queen this wouldn't work but if i used queen it would be something like this and now what this is is my login screen then i can move on for my login view model and then login state and then login action and the theme is going to be my probably mvi theme and that's it my screen is created since i don't have queen usually it would be like this if i have queen but in my case i don't login view model let's just say it's login view model like this and as i said i usually just use this one in my case so this one right here i can probably comment it out and show you how it would look like in my case i can pass my state to so this is how it would be for my screen because i don't use this one but since now we have both and we want to see how to work with both. Well, let's see how to work with just the first one, which is this one. And this would usually be just called state. So state like this. And then in here, I can use my state. So I can say state dot email is error, password, whatever I have, I can show those in here, all those states. And if I want to enter a new password, I could write, for example, outline text field or just text field, whatever I want. And the value of this, so this is the password. It's going to be my state dot password. On value change is going to be state actually not state on action which is this lambda action that takes the login action or a login action that is going to be my login action dot change email it which is the new email and then this one as you can see is right here which simply triggers the on action in my view model which means when i change the email all of that will be directly sent to my view model and then the view model will process that as we saw so this is how it would be if i use this state and also if i want to log in i would have a button right here and then in the on click i will again just use my actually here on action login action dot log in just like that and here i could have a text that says login so this is how it would be if i use this state and if i didn't if i didn't have this one what i call this one state two and this one was used i would do it in a different way which is going to be var state by view model dot state dot collect as state import and then we can just pass that one directly right here as you can see it can still work and we still get all the stuff that we need like the password and the email and everything works properly so that is how mvi would work with these states so it depends on which one we want to use and as i said in mvvm we would actually have a state for every one of those so we wouldn't have just login screen which we have all of them and in fact we would say in here for example email state and then initially an empty string and then we duplicate this for the next one that is password 
state so this is mvvm we actually have a state for every single one but in mvi we don't do that we put them in one object which is this login state we manage them directly from there so this one is called state 2 and actually that is it about mvi and if you want to apply this design pattern in green architecture as well in all the other industry scales then check my premium course in the description in which you will build an industrial or solid app in which you will use all of these things and even building a keto or backend and if you want to support me subscribe and leave a like in this video see you in the next video bye